My name is Russell Davis. I travel the world capturing culture to create the best drinking experience. 2010-2011, I was ranked one of the top three bartenders in the U.S. I've won numerous cocktail competitions around the country. I've done cocktail competitions against robots. Now, with my consulting company and limited liabilities, I invent new spirits, ways to make drinks, and places to drink. Everything from the innovative ice cream bar in San Francisco to the first zero-gravity cocktail for space. My passion is drinking culture, and my mission is its evolution. Right now, I'm in Barbados. My mission is to create the ultimate drinking experience for tourists. Whenever I come into a new location, any country, in order to do business, you really have to dig in. You gotta understand the people. Even just to create the menus, you have to understand the flavors. You understand what people are going for. And also, people coming here, what they want out of the island. Right now, we're at one of the stations where all the ZRs just pump people across the island and drop them off right here. So, if you notice, these are all the shops are, the markets are, the food places, the rum shops. This is where people come in order to live their everyday lives. What if the kids plan for breakfast plans anytime yet? I don't know what they just said. My name is Get Money. Get Money. Get Money. Man. <laughs> we'll give you a good four for ten, huh? Four for ten? Yeah, man. Something nice. So that was that was someone trying to sell me drugs. <laughs> Barbados is a mixture of many different cultures, and you see the flavors here are very representative. You have the Creole flavors, you have a very British influence. You also have the flavors of India, of Africa that kind of come through here. Turmeric. It's that yellow color that's in a curry powder. This stuff is not cheap in most mainstream markets, but here they sell it like water. So they have this crazy flavor here called Mabi, and it's a bark. It's got this really, really bitter quality to it. This is shark oil, extracted from the livers of sharks, and it's a cure-all here on the island. I have a lot of dynamic flavors to work with, from sweet, rich sorrel, to bitter mabi, to impalatable shark oil. How I balance them is still up in the air, but one thing is for sure, I'm going to use rum. People come to Barbados to drink rum. Now, Mount Gay is the oldest rum brand in the world, and it's the biggest rum producer on the island. So I'm going to the Mount Gay distillery in Canefield to learn everything about this rum and hopefully form a brand partnership that will be the backbone of my menu. This right here is a little chunk of fresh sugar cane. Now it's been a really great native snack. It's not indigenous to the island, but it was brought here and it grows freely. And when you eat it fresh, it's a little watery, a little grassy, stringy, but it's got this hint of molasses and the sweetness that's amazing. Back in the day, Cutting sugarcane was very hard labor, and this is the tool that they would have been using for cutting the sugarcane. In Barbados, you would find it being called a cutlass or a Collins. I like a cutlass because it sounds a bit more, you know, <clears throat> a little bit manly. more manly. That's yeah, yeah. And you would strip it. But most of the sugar in the sugarcane will be in a stock. So the higher up you go, mm -hmm. the less sugar content. You're going to be taking off the top, which would have the least amount of sugar in it. There you go, so that's what you do. You chop it just like that, pick it up, you tie them in a bunch, you put them on a donkey, you take it back to the sugarcane plantation. So tainted sugar is when there's a buildup of too much sugar inside of the sugarcane, and what you would find if you were to suck on tainted sugar, you would get a bit of a buzz, because what started to happen it's fermentation. It's, exactly. it's basically creating rum on the inside you of the sugarcane. You got it, buddy. You got ah. it. So what, that, back in the day, you would find a lot of the kids would go into the cane field and specifically look for the tainted sugar to suck on so they could get a nice little buzz. So drinking from young, that's how we do it in the islands. Amazing. Mount Gay does some really cool production processes when they're creating their rum, between the blending and the distilling. They use two different types of stills, a pot still and a column still. And they take those two distillates and they blend them into what they consider the perfect rum. Pot distillation, which is generally used in the creation of more complex tasting spirits such as mezcal or scotch, produces spirits in a rustic fashion that involves heating the fermented wash in a copper pot and catching the steam with a cooled coiled system. This imparts more flavor and texture than column distillation, which uses a tall steel column containing internal plates to create a purer spirit 
more efficiently and is mainly used in the production of white spirits such as vodka and gin. By blending these methods, the rum produced contains the characteristics of two different types of production using the same flavor. By understanding the profiles of the different rum blends, I can properly pair them with complementary flavors and ingredients in the cocktails. My new alliance at Mount Gay has me feeling pretty good, but there's one more local ingredient I'd like to research, and I can't buy it in a store. It's the lionfish. The lionfish and its sting are infamous to seagoers worldwide, and the pain from the venom is legendary. While lionfish are plentiful in Barbados, they're not a native species. In fact, they're an invasive species. By using this venom in a drink, I want to take these tourists on a journey of their own to experience this danger. I'll make money for the bar, and I'll help the ecology here. Of course, I have to get one first. So today, we're going to go out to the reef, and we're going to hunt these bad boys with a spear. On the island, I was introduced to G. He runs his own dive shop right off the south coast, and he's gonna take me out scuba diving and also teach me how to spear fish. G is the manliest man I've ever seen in my entire life. He is the quintessential Caribbean dude. He's got dreadlocks. I wish he was my dad. <laughs> G. What's going on, my brother? How do you use this? All right, easy. Just a basic pull with an elastic band at the end. Okay. You give the rubber band a good handshake. Thumb in the corner, mm -hmm. pull onto the pole. Pull back, you release. It goes through the fish. Lionfish, they don't run because they are pretty pompous fish. They want you to come close to them. What does it feel like to be stung? It hurts. It hurts a lot. Yeah? Yeah, my grandmother felt it. Mm -hmm. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> about spear fishing, I think about being a semi-safe distance away from this thing that has these venomous spines that can pretty much just put you in the hospital. But no, that's not the case. I was trying to scan the reef for fish and G suddenly sees one. Now I was trying to remember what G told me about how to spear them. But if for some reason you hit the fish and it's at funny angle where you can just wiggle off, and the first thing you do once you've let off the spear is you then push forward on it because you don't want it to get away. But all of that went out the window. I went after this bad boy, released the spear, hit it, and you could like feel it hit it, and then it like slung off like exactly in the way G said it would if I did it that way. I'm the worst kind of hunter because I'm the guy that will come in and wing it, and then it runs off, and I'm never able to track it down. But luckily, G came in and got that sucker out of the reef where it went to go hide and die. G might have come in and saved the day, uh, but I did the real work. <laughs> but uh, luckily I came out of there with exactly what I was looking for. Now the research phase is done, it's time to create some new cocktails and develop a battle plan. The first drink, lionfish venom infused rum. I made the lionfish venom inert by introducing the spine to 350 degrees. Then I placed it in rum that was fat washed with shark liver oil and infused with sea moss. Something the tourists will see and will have to try, kind of like the scorpions and the bottles of tequila in Mexico. The lionfish rum tastes like you gulped in a big swallow of dirty seawater. <laughs> I can roll, buddy. Dude, that's awesome. The next drink I made, sorrel sour. Mount Gay pure silver, fresh local lime juice, sorrel syrup with hard spice and cinnamon, an egg white, and then top it off with a nice little bit of dried hibiscus. That's you got the layers? Comparatively, the Bayesian palate loves sweet things much more than the American palate does. For hundreds of years, they have lived off this land which produced sugar cane. So I'm taking the head bartender, the bar manager underneath my wing to start training them. These guys are the ones that are going to inspire the rest of the staff, and I'm going to work with them one on one so they understand exactly what they're doing. Okay, so you want to try this out? Two ounces of this. Mm -hmm. So one of the other things. Whoa! Hey, that was. <laughs> you're just going to pull that on me. It was amazing. So when using the jigger after you pour it, if you turn it over, it allows all whatever's draining into your bar mat. Dude, I'm going to score so much chicks. I'm telling you, you're the sexiest guy in Mojo. Style. 
These kids have talent. In order to discard this little guy, instead of just laying it out, is just literally put it under there. All right. And I have a lot of faith that this bar staff will pull through and deliver on my new menu. You're literally building a little sorrel in the glass. That's, that's nice. amazing. <laughs> Did you just take my cocktail and one-up it? <laughs> After creating uniquely Bayesian cocktails and developing a great relationship with Mount Gay Rum, now we see what the tourists think. So there's a lot more to come.